I want to share with you something about praying in tongues today that's going to help you so much. Amen. In the area of stress, anxieties, worries, panic attacks, you can be free from addictions and you can even be free from physical infirmities. You know, God is offering you R&R, &R, God's rest and refreshing. In the midst of a world full of stress, worries, anxieties, with bad news almost every day, we have to be aware, but make sure that there's strength on the inside, that you don't get depressed from the outside. When we pray in the Spirit, we are praying beyond the boundaries and the limitations of our knowledge. You have a hotline to God Himself. Hallelujah! My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. O Lord my God, I cried unto Thee, and Thou hast healed me. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Surely He has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains. Beloved, I wish above all things that Thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. My friend, I really believe these resources will be a blessing to you. Proverbs 4 tells us that God's word is life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. If it's your liver that's giving you trouble, you receive health in that area when you receive His word. If it's your heart that's causing you pain, you receive health in that area when you receive His Word. If you have a loved one in the hospital who might not even be able to pick up a book, can I ask you to consider getting this audio resource for them? Play it for them and just allow the healing power of God's Word to take effect in their bodies and allow the sweet presence of the Lord to fill the room. It will help you on your journey of faith as you begin to walk more and more in God's divine health and healing. Amen. Now, I want to share with you something about praying in tongues today that's going to help you so much. Amen. In the area of stress, anxieties, worries, panic attacks, as well as physical troubles in terms of infirmities, chronic illness, or even disease. So, tongues is a gift from God. And here and there, you'll hear me say, weapon from God, or a device, or an instrument from heaven, made in heaven. Amen? When God gives something, like oxygen, it's amazing. When God gives something, you know, it has so many, so many, uh, it, it has myriads of uses. Like, Oxygen can be used, of course, to lift, for you to breathe into your lungs, amen? It can propel uh, machines and uh, vehicles, uh, pneumatic drills, for example, pneuma, the word pneuma is, is air, wind, and wind can propel ships and, and, and boats, and, and it can do a lot, myriads of things, just from one creation of God, air, right? When man creates, man creates one thing, and then he has to create a few things to maintain the one thing that he created like your smartphone. <laughs> when you bring your smartphone, you travel wherever you go, you got to bring along your charger. Right? You bring along your… Man creates computer, they got to bring everything else that comes to the computer. That's why my, my, in, my, in, my, uh, when, in my travels, my hotel room looked like a small hospital. 
with all kinds of tubes coming out here and there. Plus, there's a special a light. The light things in, in hotel rooms are terrible. I think they meant for hotel rooms to be romantic. All right? And me having Pastor Daniel, Pastor Lawrence, and sometimes Pastor Mark down there definitely is not romantic, okay? But they, they know that it's hard for me to prepare my messages and all that, that I'm speaking at the conference in that kind of lighting. So they always bring for me uh, a lamp, like a lampstand or something like that uh, that will help brighten up you know, my reading and all that. Then you got to have a lot of, you know, those kind of like uh, sockets and all that, and all the wires all over the place. And there's so many things to maintain. Amen? That's man's creation. Man creates something, has a lot of things to maintain it. God create one thing, has many uses. God is a giver. Amen? So God gives you the gift of tongues. Today, I'm, I'm focused on one benefit that I think that many of us have been robbed of. You may have that word in you last time, but has the devil robbed you of that word? The first thing the devil comes is to rob you of that word. And that's the area, the benefit. There are many benefits to praying in tongues. For example, and I may touch on this in the weeks to come, but let's say you're praying for your child. Your child has gone, uh, the school has reopened, right? This week. Amen? Some parents say hallelujah. <laughs> so the thing is that your child is going to uh, a school, but supposing you're praying and all of a sudden your prayer changes and you're praying in English, all right? You're praying in English, you understand what you're saying and then the Holy Spirit is inspiring you, giving you a vision about an a, 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 a impending accident that may happen to your child. What do you do? So you start praying for your child's protection, right? But not only that, knowing the propensity of human nature, you one, not only pray for your child, you'll say, this week you're not going to school. <laughs> Amen. Because why? You're afraid. Because of what you know now. Sometimes what you know can cause you to be afraid. But supposing you have a language that you don't even know you're praying this, that uh, the devil has planned in such a way, all right, to uh, harm your child and he's prepared this drunken, all right? The devil has prepared him on the same day, at the same time, your child's coming out. So he's prepared the whole thing and all that. And you're praying this and you're singing, so Rabba Karam, I pray for, I pray for my child, Lord. I pray that the drunken driver will not be there at the right place at the right time for my child, Father, in Jesus' name. And you're singing, you're happy, you're cooking, amen? You're changing diapers or you're work, working and you're just walking along and you're carrying your father and you're praying for your child who is in danger this coming week and you don't even know it. Now, which is more stressful? The first prayer in English or the prayer in the Spirit? Of course, the one in English, right? Because you're praying for your future yet you don't know what's happening. Amen. I can't begin to tell you how God gave birth to this message of grace or this rediscovery of the gospel of grace during a season of me praying in tongues. Amen. If God had told me much earlier in my secondary school that I'd be addressing literally millions of people all over the world via television and through other means and all that, I would, I would, I would never give it up. I would not have want to be in the ministry at all. Okay, because I'm so afraid of crowds. Amen. But I learned to pray in tongues. Amen. And I was praying for my future. And one day as I stood before thousands of people, God says, this is what you prayed for 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Amen. So when we pray in the Spirit, we are praying beyond the boundaries and the limitations of our knowledge. Amen. You're praying for the future. You can pray for the future. You can even pray for the past when that fear came in or that you do not know why you have experiencing today. You can't, you can't fight. You can't ward off. You can't shake off that, that fear or timidity. And, and, and God, 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 the Holy Spirit is helping you reach out and, and, and healing that part of you. And God is able to reach to the future and touch that because God is timeless. Or exactly, He's outside time because He created time. That's why the cross, as far as God is concerned, happened only yesterday. The freshness must be there when you take the communion. It's not like something 2,000 years ago. That's a, that's a, a language and a comprehension of man's idea of time. God lives outside time. So friends, listen. When you pray in tongues, today I focus on one benefit, not about intercession. The benefit is how it builds up your body and keep you, all right, in a place where you are built up so that stress, worry, fear, anxiety, panic attacks will not have any more uh, leeway or any more um, victory over your life. You can be free from addictions, and can even be free from physical infirmities. Are you ready? So can we just focus on this one area first? Amen? And in the days to come, if the Spirit of God uh, sees fit to focus on this, we'll focus on other benefits. There are myriads of benefits, like I said. One gift, amazing benefits. First, I just want to say real quick that there, there, there are certain denominations that say, 
well, don't pray in tongues, it's of the devil, and you pray in tongues, you're praying to the devil. All you got to do is just read 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 and 3. It says very clearly, He who prays in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man, but unto God. Not unto the devil, unto God. And these same people will say, we must go by the Word of God. We must go by the Bible. The Bible says, He that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man, but unto God. You have a hotline to God Himself. Hallelujah! So put aside man's opinions, put aside all the denominational prejudices and focus on the Word of God. Amen. Rest. Jesus Himself said, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Those same people that don't believe in praying tongues, invariably, always is connected. If they don't believe in praying tongues, they don't see the gifts of healings operate. They don't see the sick healed under their ministry. So they must come up with excuses for that. Amen. But it's always together. Those who believe in praying tongues see a lot of healings happen in their ministry. Amen. Well, it doesn't matter to me, Pastor Prince. It matters when your child is sick one day and medical science has no cure. You come and tell me then. It doesn't matter. So put aside all these uh, denominational prejudices and go with the Word of God. Can I have a good amen, people? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. Say edifies. The word edifies is made of, the etymology of this word comes from two Latin words. All right? Edify. Edis is actually a house or a building. Like edify can be an edifice, a tall building, a large building. So the word edify the etymology is from the Latin, edis, which is house or building, ficare, fi, fis, all right? For the word build, construct. Put them together, it is the word to construct or to repair, to build a house. Today we say edify in terms of like, well, Pastor Prince, your message today was edifying. In, in other words, morally comforting, morally inspiring or whatever. But we think in terms, we don't think in terms of physical. Okay, but the, the root word actually is physical. It's referring to a building. In fact, in the Greek, this word here, in the Greek, edifies, is the word oiko dormio. Oikos is a house, a building. Dormio is to build the building. Amen? Dormio. In Italy, you hear, see a lot of dormio. All right? A building. Dom. Dormio. Oikos dormio. To build a house. Oikos, a house. Oh, well, Pastor Prince, we are not houses. <laughs> All right? We are. We are temples. You know which part of you is a temple? Or oh, my spirit. That's what we've been told. Your spirit is not a temple. Your body is a temple. Look at 1 Corinthians 6. Or do you not know that your body is the temple? Your what? Your body. Your body is the temple. Now, I know the Holy Spirit dwells in our spirit, but it doesn't say your spirit is the temple. You cannot find the Bible. It says your spirit is the temple. It says your body is the temple. Your soma in the Greek, your body, not your psyche, all right? Not your pneuma, your soma, Psych psychosomatic conditions, you know, from your mind. But soma is body for Greek. So it says, do you not know that your soma, your body is the temple? And the word temple here is not the outward precincts of the temple. The word temple here is the holy of holies and the holy place. This is literally the sanctuary. Your body is the holy of holies. Your body is the holy place of God. Your body is the temple of God. And God wants His temple beautiful. God wants His temple clean. God wants His temple holy. God wants the word, the word whole, healthy, healthy, come from the old word that says hail, H-A-L-E, which is the word whole, complete, healthy. Amen. Heal, complete, completeness. God wants your body complete. Amen. So back then, God would say, your body is today the temple of the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? So go back to 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4. He who speaks in the tongue, oiko domio, builds himself. Another thing is that the mistake we make, and, 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 and I grew up among some great teachers who thought I'm praying in tongues, but I think where the emphasis was wrong was this. They said that when you pray in tongues, you charge your spirit. Now, thank God. Your spirit is charged, but not just your spirit. Doesn't say he will build, he speaks in a tongue, builds up his spirit, but himself. Himself means what? 
all of you. Now, which part of you is, is uh, the temple? Your body, especially your body. Why is this teaching important? Because had we preach like this, people will know every time they pray in tongues and the devil says, you're just making it up. Stop it. And they, they get discouraged. They stop it. They don't realize that they are stopping their health. They are stopping their wholeness. They are stopping their, the health from springing forth speedily. Are you listening, people? Amen? So it's important we hear the word. Somehow people have this idea that when you pray in tongues, only your spirit is being charged. And I think they got this idea from first same chapter, but later on verse 14 says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Which part of you pray? My spirit prays. So they, they, they think that oh, that's the part that got charged. No, it's just telling you which part of you is praying when you pray in tongues? When you pray in English, your mind, you must know the words, right? Your mind is praying. But when you pray in tongues, which part of you is praying? Your spirit is praying. Are you listening? Your spirit is praying. doesn't say your spirit is the one that gets edified, but your spirit is praying. But which part of you gets edified? Back, back to verse 4. Edifies himself. And because the word edified, or ekodomio, means building, constructing, or repairing a house or building, which part of your, your person is the temple, your body? That means when you pray in tongues, you are preparing, you are building, you are constructing, you are repairing your body. Ladies, why do you put on makeup? Okay, makeup. Why do you put on moisturizer and things like, repair, man, repair. <laughs> it's all about repair, right? A moisturizer is a moisturizer, but I guess when you have something else, that can repair. It's even better, right? Right? Father, forgive all these liars here in this house here today in Jesus' name. All right, one more time. All right, we apply stuff to repair, right? That now we believe that if we imbibe a pill or a capsule for beauty, it's better that beauty comes from within, right? God has a better way. What if I tell you, your body, your face is also the temple of God? Huh? And the Bible says you can, you can repair your body by praying in tongues. Are you listening? All right, let's drop down the same chapter, but let's drop down to verse 21. Then the Apostle Paul quotes from the Old Testament, from the prophet Isaiah specifically. In the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips, I will speak to these people. And yet for all that, they will not hear me, says the Lord. Unfortunately, a segment of God's people even will not hear him when it comes to praying in tongues. And the context here is tongues because the next verse says, therefore tongues are for a sign. So it's very clear he's talking about praying in tongues. Okay? He's quoting the Old Testament. Whenever the Holy Spirit quotes the Old Testament, it will do us, it will pay us good. It will benefit us for us to look at the quotation. So let's go to that quotation in the Old Testament. It's from Isaiah 28. For with stammering lips and another tongue will, I, will God speak to these people. Ever felt like your tongue sometimes is like stammering lips? You say, Pastor, my tongue is not like Pastor Lawrence's tongue, so smooth, so fluent. Hey, yours get first priority, stammering lips. <laughs> eh? Pastor Lawrence and Pastor Mark one is another tongue. <laughs> Amen? And it's, who is speaking? God is speaking. God will speak to these people. To whom God said, now watch this. Now there's an additional benefit. That's why it always pays you well to look up the reference. And the context here says, God is saying, this is the rest, definite article. Ha manuka, definite article. This is the rest which you may cause the weary to rest. And this is the magia, the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. You know, God is offering you R&R, &R, rest and refreshing. Guys, you all know, right? After your, 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 your term and exercise in the field and all that, overseas, you have an R&R &R days, right? Rest and refreshing. Literally, rest and recreation. This is God's rest and refreshing. God is saying, this is the rest. The is a definite article. And the word rest here is actually the word manuka. It helps you to remember the manuka, honey. All right, same pronunciation, manuka. All right, manuka. This is the manuka. In other words, there's a place of rest. 
in the midst of a world full of stress, worries, anxieties, with bad news almost every day. Amen? Some bad news, some fake news, and all kinds of news, you know, put, put in, the, in the mix, and uh, the threat of war, rumors of war, and, 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 and uh, 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 all kinds of uh, terror, you know, uh, uh, attacks and things like that. It's very easy for our hearts to be fearful, but God says there's a place called Manukkah. This is the rest. And the whole context there is referring to stammering lips and another tongue. When you pray in tongues, you literally tranquilize yourself. You bring yourself to a resting place. And this word resting place, God says, this is the place you may cause the weary to rest. A lot of people are weary. They are tired. They are tired. They're just tired. If you read Daniel, it says that the spirit of Antichrist in the last days will weary the saints of the Most High. Weary the saints. They will wear out the saints of the Most High. The devil's, one of the things the devil does is that he just wears you out. He wears you out. You read things in social media, it wears you out. You hear bad news, it wears you out. When they call evil good and good evil, it wears you out. So the saints of the end times will be worn out. But the Bible says this is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest. To rest here is nuak. Manuka is a noun. Nuak is a verb. Noah is the name Noah. And when grace was first mentioned, it says Noah found grace. In other words, rest finds grace in the eyes of the Lord. God loves it when you rest. When you rest, you are saying, God, I'm trusting you. God, I'm not working, but you are working. Lord, I'm not doing, but you are doing. God loves it. That's why rest finds grace in the eyes of the Lord. Rest, Manukkah, is also the place of the promised land for the believer today. The Old Testament, the promised land is a land where they will enter the land and drink from wells they did not dig. Eat from vineyards they did not plant. Build, uh, live in houses they did not build. In other words, the promised land is a literal land of which they did not do the work. Amen? Like a rest, you just enter in. But what is our rest today? Our rest today in Hebrews is actually the rest of God. Watch this. This same word, manukkah, in Psalms, it says, God swore in my wrath about the children of Israel that refused to believe Him. And right, God says, enter the land. Uh, what I just told you just now, I, I've given you a land flowing, not just filled, but flowing. Idea of uh, over, superfluence, abundant, superfluous. It's, 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 it's exceeding, a flowing of milk and honey. And yet they say, no, uh, uh, no, God hate us. That's why God brought us to this land. And it broke God's heart. And God says, I swore in my wrath, they will not enter my rest. Hebrew, Manukkah. And the interesting thing is that Hebrews 4 talks about this same passage and says, let us labor therefore to enter the rest. I wonder if the labor is praying in tongues. Because praying in tongues sometimes is like a labor. You pray, 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 pray. After one day, people ask you, any change? Yes. Dry mouth. <laughs> Tired tongue. And you pray, 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 pray. Not two more days. Is there any change in your body? Yes. What is it? Blur. Tired. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and spiritually, all right, it seems like nothing is happening and there's a spiritual attack on you. The devil is saying, give up, give up. You're just making it up. Stop it, stop it. And you're still praying in tongues and all of a sudden you realize something is happening but deep down inside first. It's long before God removes your disease. Long, long before God removes your depression. Long before God destroys that addiction in your life. All right, by you praying in tongues. First of, first of all, the first few days, I believe, he's dealing with your fears, your panic attacks, your anxieties, your depression, your stress. And that's why the, after you pray in tongues for the first day, you don't say, well, the pain is still there, the condition is still there. No, God is dealing from the inside out. And I'll show you more of this. And I'm telling you people, listen carefully, stress is becoming a real problem, especially in these last days. Jesus says man's heart, and I believe he was referring to the literal heart. It's hard to find whether the Bible is referring to a literal heart or a spiritual heart because both use the word kardia in the Greek. So Jesus says man's cardia will fail because of the fear of looking at what is coming upon the earth. So be careful when you look at the news and things like that, all right? We're not saying put our heads in the, in the sand like an like a, you know, ostrich and all the pretend things don't exist. No, we have to be aware, but make sure that there's strength on the inside, that you don't get depressed from the outside. Now I'm going to read to you. I like to read the latest discoveries. In fact, some of the discoveries I shared, I shared in my past messages down through the years, but I like to read the latest. Now, this is the seventh edition of this periodical that was released. 
all right, called Brain Facts. It's released by the Society for Neuroscience, all right, a study of the brain and the nervous system. So this is the seventh edition because they have new discoveries. Do you know, do you know that scientists are still studying the brain? You know that? What they should do is study Pastor Mark's brain. That'll be really exciting. <laughs> All right, from Brain Facts. This is what they, they said. What do standing frustrated in a supermarket checkout, in a supermarket checkout line, or sitting in a traffic jam have in common with fleeing predators as was done in the early days of human beings. So we all understand, right? I mean, queuing up for coming to church or queuing up at the supermarket and all that. What has this got to do with fight or flight response? Right? Clearly, these activities are very different, yet they provoke the same responses in the body. The release of hormones, and these hormones are glucocorticoids and epinephrine. Two chemical secretions, right? two hormones released by your adrenal to improve memory, boost immune function, enhance muscular activity, and restore physiological balance. Now, over long periods of time, for a while, it's okay. You know, you see a, a snake, right? And the snake has reared its ugly head at you. You don't say, oh, hi, how are you? I didn't mean to bum you away. All right, you run. Amen? The adrenal glands release your your corticosteroids and all that, and your epinephrine to make you run. Amen? Amen? So your, 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 your blood, blood pressure rises, your heart rate increases, and you run. It's either fight or flight. But he's talking about over long periods of time. If everything in life, even driving down the road here in Singapore, if driving down the road in Dallas or anywhere that you are at, if everything frustrates you, if everything makes you anxious, my wife just reminded me the other day. If everything, especially on the road, if everything you are frustrated by, you are hostile about, then listen. Over long periods of time, as these hormones continue to be released, the consequences can be negative. Memory is impaired. Immune function is suppressed. And energy is stored as fat. Overexposure to glucocorticoids leads to weakened muscles. Elevated glucocorticoids and epinephrine contribute to hypertension, high blood pressure, atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, doing my best here, and abdominal obesity. Don't look down. <laughs> epinephrine also increases the release and activity of body chemicals that cause inflammation adding to the body's chronic stress burden. This continual chemical activity can lead to arthritis and accelerated aging of the brain. These findings have been verified in animal experiments. Aging rats show impaired neuron function in the hippocampus, an area of the brain important for learning, memory, and emotion, as a result of increased glucocorticoids secretion throughout their lives. Overexposure to glucocorticoids also increases the number of neurons damaged by stroke. Moreover, prolonged glucocorticoid exposure before or immediately after birth causes a decrease in the normal number of brain neurons and smaller brain size. If you're pregnant, if you're about to give birth, don't be stressed. What do you do? Okay, what's more, scientists have identified a variety of stress-related disorders including high blood pressure, clogged arteries, impotency, and loss of sex drive in males, irregular menstrual cycles in female, colitis, and adult onset diabetes. Familiar these few days? Stress also can contribute to sleep loss when people get caught in a vicious cycle, elevated glucocorticoids, delaying the onset of sleep. And sleep deprivation, raising glucocorticoid levels. So this is from Brain Facts by the Society for Neuroscience. Now, many of it, of course, they will not deal with supernatural. They cannot. I'm telling you, the devil's means is always to stress you out. The devil is trying to wear you out. He's trying. You cannot fight against 
supernatural forces with natural means. You can, you can, you can uh, offset or put down for a while the outward symptoms of stress. You can take medicine. There are also uh, anxiety-related uh, uh, pills and medicine. There are sleeping tablets and all that. But this, and I thank God for doctors and all those people who take time to relieve the sufferings of humanity. I thank God for that. But one thing, if you're dealing with the devil and he's supernatural, you've got to have supernatural means. From heaven comes this weapon. Do you think for one moment God would design us and God, God put liver there for a reason. God put kidneys there for a reason. There are people who, 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 who have no problem with their appendix, they take out their appendix. I think there's a reason why God put appendix there. Try not to take it out. Don't try to take out too many things. <laughs> Pastor Mike tried a part of his brain last time. And I told him until now. You see what happened? He said, huh? Anyway. <laughs> now I'm just teasing, okay? You know, he loves it when I tease him. Pastor Mark. He loves it. He said, Pastor, you make me famous. He said. <laughs> That's why I told you, there's a case in point right now. He believes he's being famous when you're making made fun of. Okay, anyway. God says this, the rest and the refreshing. When you pray in tongues, there is a rest, there's a release. There is an untying of the knots on the inside when you go, you need supernatural means. Now, if the means to combat stress and panic attacks and depression and anxiety must depend on you being on one location where there, there, there is running ri a river and there's greeneries and there's a mountain and all that, then you know what? What's going to happen when you come back to the real world? Some people, they have the luxury, they have the money to be able to spend time, to take time, to go somewhere abroad and, and relax, for, even then for a while. Because wherever you, you go, there you are, <laughs> you know? You can be in a beautiful setting and yet you're worried inside. So you cannot depend on that. It might be something more portable that you can bring this weapon, you can bring this, this gift wherever you go. And you can operate with loud sounds, blaring horns, children crying out for your attention in the midst of all the hustle and bustle and at the frantic pace. You can, just, you can still pray in tongues and experience the manuka, the rest. The word, you may cause the weary to rest. I said just now rest. Same word as noak, Noah. And the first mention is Nuwak. The noun is Noah. All right, Nuwak was first mentioned when the ark rested on Mount Ararat and the date is given. It's exactly the date Jesus rose from the dead. In other words, rest is not possible until Jesus rose from the dead. Have you noticed that in the Old Testament, David never prayed in tongues. Elijah never spoke in tongues. Hezekiah never spoke in tongues. None of the prophets, not even Daniel spoke in tongues. Only after Jesus rose from the dead, for the first time, the gift of tongues was given. Could it be, could it be, people? All right, it's something very unique because it's tied up with grace. It is a gift of grace. It's a grace gift that will help you in all your, the affairs of life. Can I have a good amen? When you pray in the Spirit, something happens that can be scientifically proven. In 2006, and by the way, uh, this is also on YouTube, you can find it. The fact I'm going to share with you is not from YouTube, all right? It's from another study, but it's the same study they did. But YouTube will give you the summarized version. It's done by ABC. And the University of Pennsylvania, a doctor there, by all my uh, uh, studies on him, he doesn't seem to be a Christian. He's not a Christian, all right? And he's Dr. Andrew Newberg, all right? Now, Dr. Andrew is also the adjunct professor there, all right, uh, uh, nuclear, nuclear medicine. He's, special, he's the professor there in University of Pennsylvania, and he decided to, to make this study of people who have this activity he calls praying in tongues. So he had five subjects to put uh, all the electrodes on to study the blood flow of the brain. Okay, I, I don't tell you the title of the YouTube in case you want to look at it, because I know you all, you'll look at it now. You will start looking up now, so maybe later on. So anyway, let me tell you what they discovered. They chose five subjects who pray in tongues, okay? One, you can say, well, maybe, uh, you know, it was a, a fake thing after all, right? The guy just faking it. But five, not knowing each other, they all pray in tongues. So he made a study to study the blood flow. Now, Dr. Andrew Newberg said to uh, um, the, the people of uh, ABC, actually, the study showed this. Now, when you pray, when you, when you speak, your, your speech center is in the frontal lobe. 
the frontal lobe of your head. Okay? So when you're talking, actually, when you're thinking about words to sing and all that, your frontal lobe lights up or the blood flow there. You can see the blood flow. They can have this imaging on, on screen. They can see the blood flow. Okay? But they say this. Every other religious practice, whether it's meditation or singing hymns, you can see the blood flow there in the front. Let me use his own words together. I don't want to put words in his mouth. So I'm going to read his quote. Our brain imaging research shows us, these are his own words, this doctor who is not a believer. He says, our brain imaging research shows us that these subjects are not in control of the usual language centers during this activity of praying in tongues. Do you hear that? The Bible says, when I pray in an unknown tongue, who prays? My spirit by the Holy Spirit prays. So he says, their frontal lobe is not light up. In other words, they are not controlling. And yet, there is a self-awareness, which means they're not, they, haven't lost, they didn't lose control of their body. Then he says this, these are his words. These findings could be interpreted as the subject's sense of self being taken over by something else. If he's a Christian, he will say someone else. Can you see that? We scientifically assume it's being taken over by another part of the brain. But we couldn't see where this took place. The fact that this occurred in all five candidates is very significant. So this is very interesting. We scientifically assume it's been taken over by another part of the brain. But we couldn't see where this took place. So who do you think is the one giving the words? The Holy Spirit. And they can't find any part of the brain that's producing it. Isn't this interesting? And all five showed the same result. Hmm. Isn't this great? Isn't this amazing? Many years ago, I was preaching on praying in tongues in our church. In fact, it was during that season that God gave me the gospel of grace in a powerful way. And I did the first series on wisdom in the 90s. And then after that, in the early 2003, I began to uh, pray in tongues and, and teach that to our church. In fact, we had months of a series on praying in tongues or teaching on praying in tongues. Somewhere during that time, I met this brother who is now a leader in my church, a leader of good standing. At that time, he shared this testimony. I was well aware of his circumstances and all that. And he shared about how for, for a number of years, he was not able to sleep properly. So much so that he only can sleep one or at the most two hours at night. So the doctors gave him sleeping tablets. It came to a place where he took three sleeping tablets and still slept one to two hours. Then he increased it to six sleeping tablets. And again, only slept at the most two hours. Then he said, after some time, he developed sinusitis. The right side of his, the, the, um, his facial cavity, cheekbone cavity, had a lot of mucus and he had to go, in fact, he had two operations over that condition and he had to go to the hospital to have it drained. All this while, his job was being affected. His money was also being drained. Amen? And then the doctors gave him something, uh, some antibiotics and, and some painkillers and all that to combat sinusitis. And he took those stuff and then those stuff caused him to have gastric. He had to take medicine for his gastritis. After for a while, all of a sudden he felt he was besieged by panic attacks. So much so that he cannot go to work. He can't even step out of the house, he told me. He can't even take a bus. He started worrying and started... Uh, 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 the amazing thing is that he, his, his appetite fell, but he put on 10 kgs. Almost after days, he put on 10 kgs. He didn't, he didn't understand he was not eating well. And you know, it's like panic attacks, gastritis, sinusitis, can't sleep at night, and the panic attacks. And it got worse and worse, the panic attacks. So much so the wife had to stay home and with, the, with the kids here and there, helping him to cope with the problem. And then he came to a place where he was, he went to the doctor again. The doctor gave him some tablets for anti-anxiety. He says, all in all, he, he took about 30 medicine in one day. He said that it was terrible. Then one day, as he was showering, he told me, 
he heard God speaking to him. And God said to him, Son, pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. And he said, I only managed to get a few syllabus out in tongues. And the few syllabus brought rest immediately. Just a few syllabus. It brought rest immediately. Then I loved it. I began to pray more. And as I prayed more, I found that one by one, all my symptoms start to dissipate. Not immediately, but slowly. Then I found that gastritis was gone. After a while, the sinus problem was taken care of. And all of a sudden, he, find, he, found, he found himself free from depression, anxiety, and from the panic attacks. And he told me, Pastor Prince, every day I did two things only. Pray in tongues and listen to your message. Pray in tongues, listen to your message. Pray in tongues, listen to your message. And every one of those problems are no more. Today I sleep peacefully. He got a good job. In fact, the Lord told him, what, what do you like to do? Or I like to uh, repair computers, he says. Uh, then God says, do a job repairing computers. And he did that. The last I know is that he's doing well. I do not know whether he's in a different sector now, but he's today uh, a brother of good standing, a leader, a care group leader in our church and blessing many people and ministering to people with addictions. Amen. And it all started with a little trickle of water, rivers of living water, a few syllabus. They became a rivulet, they became a river and a torrential river, waterfall right into the ocean, praise God. Start praying in the Spirit. I believe, I believe, the first few days when you're praying in the Spirit, the Spirit is not battling the problem you have, not the panic attack, not the depression, not the addiction, not your physical uh, disease. I believe that it's battling your fears. It is clearing out your stress, worries, anxieties. I believe God wants to do something inside before He touches your body. Are you listening? And for that, I'm going to show you a, a template and then we're going to close. Are you blessed so far? Do you feel like going If you don't pray in the Spirit, you don't pray in tongues, don't worry, at the end of the service, you will. Amen? It's a gift. It's a grace gift. Ladies, every time you put that expensive cosmetic, go ahead, put it on, put it on, you know? Even an old house, you, you put the painting also looks good. All right? Put it on. All right? But how about God's way? Pray in the Spirit. Repair. Repair your temple. Your temple! Amen. The temple of God. Glorify God in your body. Praise God. Now, why is it that God filled the Old Testament with so many stories of the temple? Is it that God wants us to build a temple? Is it a physical temple? We know the church is not a building. The church is a collection of God's people. This is the greatest organization in the whole universe. And it's eternal. Will be forever. Will be forever, I said. XYZ company, if there is one, I just happen to illustrate. So, XYZ company will not last forever, but the church will be forever. That's in the Bible. All the prophecies of the first coming of Jesus have all come to pass. Specifically, he's a Jew. Our tribe of Judah. Born in Bethlehem, Ephrata. Because there were two Bethlehems in Israel. One Bethlehem in Galilee, one Bethlehem, Ephrata. It specifically mentioned Ephrata, Bethlehem. He'll be born, all right, from the lineage of David. Mary came from the line of David. Joseph came from the line of David. So lineage of David, very specifically, he mentions there. There'll be a star coming out. Balaam prophesied that long before Jesus came. The star is there. When Jesus was crucified, he says, they pierced my hands and feet. When David said those words, the psalmist David said those words, they pierced my hands and feet in Psalms 22. Crucifixion was not even an idea. The Romans haven't invented it. Actually, the Romans didn't invent it. It came from the Phoenicians who invented it later. But at the time of David, 3,000 years ago, it wasn't even a device. They pierced my hands and feet. And he opens up with, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The cry of Jesus at the cross. So every prophecy of the first coming has come to pass. All right. Why is it? I'll close with it. Why is it that the Bible has so many stories about the temple? Why? Because it's telling you, not just a temple physical, back then it's a real temple of Solomon, but it's telling you about your body, right? So can we learn something from here? Yes. There's a story there 
in the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, where it talks about King Ahaz. King Ahaz was a wicked king of Judah. He didn't walk in the ways of his father David. And God came against this man and the first thing he did against God, the first thing King Ahaz did, he shut the doors of the temple. All right, you'll find that in 2 Chronicles 28. Now we look at 2 Chronicles 29. As a result, Israel went into, was plumbed into darkness. The women and the children had all kinds of bondage coming on them. Bad things happened. But it has died. And he has a son called Hezekiah, which became the, one of the godliest kings of Judah. Amen? He brought revival to Israel. And when he, was, when he ascended the throne, he was only 25 years old. Young people, listen, look up here. You can be young and be used of God. He was only 25 years old. And the first year of his reign, in the very first month of his reign, this is what he did. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. The very first thing he did, he opened the door that his father shut. You know why his father shut the doors? Because they were doing all kinds of abominable things in the Holy of Holies, in the holy place. They brought all kinds of defilements, all, time, all kinds of filth, all kinds of uncleanness into the temple. Amen? And the filth is, is still there and he shut the door with all the filth inside. Here's a picture of you and I. We got so much baggage on the inside. Emotional baggage, stress, worry, fear, anxiety. These are all uncleanness as well as disease, sickness. You know, in the Old Testament, they don't really say, they, they do here and there. They use the word disease and sickness. They do. But most of the time, ceremoniously, in the temple and all that, or in the, in the precincts of Jerusalem, they use the word, if somebody has leprosy, they don't say disease. They say uncleanness. And that's why Jesus touched the leper. He didn't say be healed. Jesus says be clean. But the man was healed of leprosy. And the way they cleansed was water. Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, He's like the rivers of leading water. Leading because wherever He touches, there'll be life. Hmm? And that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Now watch this. The very first thing evil King Ahaz did was shut the doors. The very first thing his son Hezekiah did was to open the doors. When you open the door, then you can bring out all the filth. Right? Question. Our bodies are the temple of God, right? What is the door? What is the open door? What is shutting the door and what is opening the door? Which part, if our body is the temple, which part is the door? No, your hair is not the door. If your hair is the door, some of us have got no more doors left. <laughs> Try again. Mouth. Mouth. Very good. But you're talking to Pastor Prince. And Pastor Prince always asks for Bible. Do you have a Bible verse for that? That the door is the mouth and the mouth is the door? Yes. Let me save you the time. Psalms 141. David says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Keep watch over the door of my lips. When King Ahaz shut the door, he kept all the disease, all the uncleanness inside. All right? Back then, it was literal uncleanness. But today, all right, when, when Hezekiah opened the door, so your first, the first step out of your, 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 your addictions and out of your panic attacks and your depression and your anxieties and your worries and cares, open the door. Hey, I'm not referring to some of you what you're doing when I'm preaching, okay? Opening the door. That's not opening the door. I know, I know I see your Grand Canyon. I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to speaking. Amen. First, by the way, the following chapter is a revival after revival after revival. Revival is like not since the days of the early years. It says, Hezekiah brought in revival. It all began with opening the door. Do you see that? Amen. So the door of my lips. Okay, watch what he did. Go back to the story again. He brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them into the square on the east. And this is what he told them. Then he said to them, listen to me, O Levites, 25 years old, consecrate yourselves now 
and consecrate the house of the Lord, the God of your fathers, and carry the uncleanness out from the holy place. For our fathers have been unfaithful and have done evil in the sight of the Lord and have forsaken Him and turned their faces away from the dwelling place of the Lord and have turned their backs. They have also shut the doors of the porch. He mentioned that specifically. Shut the doors of the porch. Keep the porch in mind. I'm coming back to the porch, okay? Just keep that in mind somewhere. Tuck it somewhere, okay? They have shut the doors of the porch and put out the lamps. The moment you shut the door, you stop praying in the Spirit. Amen? Your lamp goes out. There's no more revelation. I don't know, you know, when I pray in the Spirit a lot during that time I was telling you in the 90s and all that, it gave birth to the gospel of grace revelation. It's not a new revelation. It is like the light shine on an old gospel that Paul preached. Likewise, even for your own daily needs, you need light, you need wisdom. I'm just saying, focus right now on the fact that when the door is shut, the lamp is put out. And not only that, there's no more praise and worship. There's no more worship to God. No burnt incense or offered burnt offerings. Therefore, the wrath of the Lord was against Judah and Jerusalem. He made them an object of terror, of horror and hissing as you see with your own eyes. I want to tell you that, that today, God is not angry with His people. And He will never be angry with His people. Look at me. Never. We are not under law, we are under grace. We are not in our flesh, we are in Christ. For God to be angry with us is to be angry with Christ. The seven years of tribulation is the days of God's wrath. We are not appointed to wrath. We are appointed to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. God has sworn He will never be wrath with us. Isaiah 54, that comes after Isaiah 53, the work of Jesus. So when you read all this, keep things in context. I'm talking about the uncleanness of our bodies. We call it disease, sickness and all that. Okay, how to remove it? I want, to see, I want you to see the pattern. Okay, verse 9. For behold, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. So if you find, you, you, you know, you can be the wealthiest, one of the wealthiest guys in, in, uh, in, 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 in the nation and all that, but your son is addicted to drugs. That's not wealthy. That's not really being rich, isn't it? Your son is in captivity. The son of your love. I don't call that prosperity. But why is it our, our families suffer, our loved ones suffer? Not because God is angry with us today, but because we have shut the door of our lips. There's no intercession for them. You know, you cannot watch over your children 24-7. I repeat, you cannot watch over your children all the time, but the Lord can. Do you know that you're trying to get them to do something outwardly, that they're not inclined to inwardly, and even when they obey you outwardly, it's not real because it's not inwardly. But when you pray, God can create a revelation on the inside. Amen? You can pray and light will come on them. The menorah, the lamp will, will be turned on and they will see. And have a good amen. So let's follow the story. We'll close with this. Coming to this now. Are you all being helped? That's why in, uh, Jude says, building up, I love the word up. Have you noticed that when you pray in tongues, you are building yourself up. Build, for building yourselves up, praying in the Holy Spirit. Building yourself. It didn't say build your pneuma, your spirit, but build yourself, your entire self up. Praying in the Holy Spirit. You can build yourself up above stress, above worry, above anxiety. Pray in the Spirit. Apostle Prince, I tried before there. Eh? Oh yeah? Yeah, I tried the whole afternoon praying in tongues. Wow, you perceive it, nah? <laughs> the door opened for a while, you go inside, you look here, look here, nothing happening, you go outside. <laughs> you close the door again. Let's see how, how, how many days it took for them to clean up the uncleanness, shall we? I'm not saying the exact this. I'm not saying you must do the exact this. Although I did try it. When, I first, when God first gave me this revelation, I tried exactly the same days, okay? But, but that's me. Okay, look at this. So what happened to that? So the priest went in, based on the instruction of the king, Hezekiah, the priest went into the inner part of the house of the Lord, the Holy of Holies, to cleanse it. And every unclean thing which they found in the temple of the Lord, they brought out to the court of the house of the Lord. Then the Levites received it to carry out to the Kidron Valley. So they, took, they went in all the Holy of Holies, took all the filth out, amen. For us, we have a lot of uh, 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 prejudices, uh, bitterness, uh, wrong believing, and, and not only that, uh, 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 um, uh, uh, panic attacks and and, and fears and worries and, and evil imaginations. Evil imagination is so real for people with depression. 
all they can see in their future is like, you know, uh, a bad prognosis, you know, you won't live to see your future. They might even see their own funeral. They might see their husband marrying another woman. They might see, see, see their wife marrying another man. They might see their, you know, a lot of, a, a, a person who's depressed, see all kinds of wrong, you know, wrong channel. It's real. Never make fun or take light someone who tells you, take lightly someone who tells you they are suffering from depression. Point them to God's heavenly weapon. Hmm? They brought it out. All the filth, all the panic attacks. For us, it's all these things, okay? Plus the cause of the disease. All the things that the brain facts, uh, you know, talk about just now. All those things being brought out. Then they reached the holy place. It took some, a few days, isn't it? How many days it took? They brought it out. Okay, verse 17. Now they began the consecration on the first day of the first month and on the, what day? Eighth day of the month. They came or they entered the porch. Again, the porch. Put that somewhere. The porch of the Lord. Then they consecrated the house of the Lord in eight days and finished on the 16th day of the first month. After they cleaned out all the debris and the uncleanness, in eight days, they came back to the door, to the porch, right? And then they consecrated another eight days, the entire temple. 16 days altogether. So when God showed me this, when He first showed me this uh, many years ago, in the early 2000s, I actually prayed for eight days. And then on the eighth day, I asked myself, any changes? Nothing. Dry mouth. Heavy tongue. But something happened. That was the year that we faced SARS. And we went through it in our church by the grace of God. Because one of the things that people don't want to do is to congregate where there are a lot of people in an aircon closed environment. Remember that? After that, next thing I know, next few years, bang, the ministry opened. Bang, the doors opened to international ministry. Bang, I was doing books. Bang, you know, I was on television. But I said before, you can be on television, doesn't mean that it was, it was thick. Only God. But I was praying for the future without even knowing it. And I was preparing myself. I was being built up from a person who is nervous about standing in front of my class to someone who, could, who God could use. Thank you for the one amen. I appreciate it came somewhere there. Okay, praise the Lord. Lord bless this sister, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. At least somebody loved me. Amen. <laughs> I was almost tempted to be depressed. Panic attack was running around down there somewhere already. But because of you, sister, thank you. Thank you for opening the door of your lips. <laughs> have you noticed that the door of the temple, all right, today have different colors? Many of them are red. <laughs> Some are even orange. What is he talking about, Pastor Prince? It's okay, Pastor Mark, you'll get it. All right. <clears throat> so, in eight days, something happened. So it's not the feeling, it's not the feeling, okay, people? But all of a sudden you feel that the first thing God de deals with is your stress, worry, fear, and anxiety long before He deals with your condition. All I can say is that when I look back, my goodness, I couldn't have gone through all that and did all that without it stressing me out. But today, thank God, literally, I don't feel the, the weight and the burden and the responsibility of raising money for this building and other things because I've learned to pray in the Spirit and let go. All right? I'm not perfect. You can ask my wife, amen? But I need to be reminded as much as you that this is a weapon from God. Can I have a good amen? Okay? I'm going to help you again one more time. Okay? Perhaps God is using my words to bless many. Okay, one amen down there somewhere. Okay, praise God. I'll give you a third time. Third time. All right? Third time, okay? Do you love me, Peter? Okay, never mind. All right. <laughs> so, 16 days. <laughs> so please don't get hung up with eight days, okay? Eight is the number of new beginning. In other words, they started with the door. They came, they, they went in. It takes time to clear out the debris. 
first day, second day, third day. If they check their bodies, it's still the same. They check their circumstances, still the same. All right? It takes a few, a few days. Now, you know, we all want instant thing. Many of us say, speak to the mountain with a God kind of faith and don't doubt and it will happen. Yes, but there are people who, who find it's, a, it's hard for them to speak to the mountain. God is so loving that God actually gave us another way to attack the mountain. Would you like to know how? Would you like to know? Cut down the mountain bit by bit. <laughs> uh, serious. And it's a new weapon. What do you think it is? Isaiah 41. Behold, God says, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. Now, sledge in those days in Israel, it's like your, your snow sledge. Literally, it's flat. But underneath, right, they put stones. Okay, they're like four planks. And underneath, they, they embed the stones. And what they do is that during the harvest time, they'll put the, uh, the stalks of grain on the ground and they will draw, uh, make the cow draw the sledge over the grains. And the grains will separate the husk, the shaft, and the kernel, uh, separate the, the, the grain, the wheat, right, from the from the chaff. You understand? That's how they do it. But God says, I'm going to make you a new, say new, sharp, threshing sledge with sharp teeth. Now the word teeth here is very interesting. It's the word fepia. Fepia. Fepia is literally in the Hebrew, you can check it out. It's literally two-aged mouth. Two mouth. Literally. It's used only one other time in Psalms where it says, let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged pephia, two-edged sword in their hand. So when you pray in tongues, all right, it's literally a double-edged sword. And God says, it's a new instrument that came on the day of Pentecost. Right? Right? Watch this. Back to Isaiah 41. Now, you will thrash the mountains. That's your disease, your, 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 dead, mountain of dead, challenges in, in, in relationship, whatever. You shall thrash the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. You shall winnow them. You know winnow? In those days, they go up to a higher uh, elevation, a mountain, whatever, and they have this winnowing fork. What they do is that they take the stalks of grain and they throw it in the air. And the strong wind will separate again the chaff from the wheat. Because the chaff is very light, the wheat will fall. Amen? and it will fall down, and the shaft will be blown away. So God says, at the end, you are praying in tongues. Your prom is still there the first day, second day, few weeks even, it's still there, but you're cutting it down. And then one day, you look at it, and you <coughs> and it's gone. <laughs> oh, you got it? <laughs> it's gone. That's what he says. You shall winnow them, the wind shall carry them away, and the whirlwind shall scatter them. You shall rejoice in the Lord, and glory in the Holy One of Israel. Amazing. I've never heard anyone preach this as praying in tongues. This came to me many years ago. And the Lord says to me, it's praying in tongues. I never really paid attention. But one day when I studied that in the Hebrew, the word teeth is actually double mouth. Then I saw it. There's another way to attack the mountain. Pray in the Spirit every day. Amen. Okay, go back to Hezekiah. We're going to close. Uh, Hezekiah's story. They entered the porch of the Lord. They finished it on the 16th day of the first month. Remember, I told you about focus on the porch? Now see the porch. The porch. The Solomon's temple. Show them a picture of Solomon's temple. Okay, this is a model in the Holy Land model. It's a small model. You can still see it in Israel today. At the time of Jesus. Now, where is Solomon's porch? There it is. First of all, Eastern Gate. Can you see the Eastern Gate? There's the Eastern Gate. Solomon's porch is all around. Okay, Solomon's porch, all around. Can you see that? It's a colonnade. Can you see the, the, the pillars? That's where the rabbis would teach. That's where Jesus would teach and all that. Okay, so it's, it's all around. But watch this, listen carefully. When the Babylonians came in later and they destroyed the temple, they burned down, they razed the temple down. Okay, what happened was that the only part of the temple that was left is the front part, Solomon's porch. That's the only part that's left. Eastern Gate. And during the time of Jesus, which is after the Babylonians, Jesus came. Jesus walked on this porch in John 10. Now it was the Feast of Hanukkah, dedication in Jerusalem. And it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple. Where? In Solomon's porch. The only place that is standing. 
Why Solomon's Porch? All miracles happen in Solomon's Porch. I wish I can share more on this, but because of time, I want to let you go. I won't be expounding on John 10. John 10 is where you find the thief comes not, but the steal, kill, and destroy. By the way, listen. Jesus cursed the fig tree, remember? Then he thought on the God kind of faith, speaking to the mountain to be removed. Remember that? What did Jesus do after that? Right after he cursed the fig tree, he went into Jerusalem. What did he do there? He cleansed the temple. Remember the, the thieves and the robbers? He called them thieves. He drove them out of the precincts of the temple and he says that my house is a house of prayer. And then, no, he cursed the fig tree. After he cleansed the temple, he came out. And guess what happened? Peter calling to remember, says, look at the fig tree, it's dried up. Then Jesus taught them about the God sign of faith. I submit to you, when you speak to your disease, when you speak to your condition, all right, you might not see immediate result. Keep on praying in the Spirit. Amen? And then, you come back to this again, you find, we don't know how long, how it's up to God, but the manifestation will be there. Amen? You have made my house a den of thieves. And my house is a house of prayer. Are you with me so far? Once you clean everything and you pray in the Spirit, and all of a sudden you come and affect your mental realm, your soulish realm, your emotional realm, your body will be the last part to be touched, right? Am I right? And yet the body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, right? Are you listening? You look for your disease, your mountain, and all of a sudden, the symptom might be smaller already. It gets lesser. And one day you look for it, it's gone. You, <laughs> you didn't realize it was so light. Last two verses, we're close. Solomon's porch. Go to Acts. Remember the guy who was lame at the gate beautiful? There are scholars who believe that the gate beautiful is the eastern gate, the one that's sealed. Okay, look at this. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's. Greatly amazed. So I submit to you that the eastern gate, show them the eastern gate again. The eastern gate is sealed and that's Solomon's porch. So I submit to you that the gate beautiful, some, some scholars believe is the eastern gate. That's where the lame man was. And it stands to reason that the only part that's standing is this part here. And last verse, Acts 5, the place of miracles. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord. Where? In Solomon's porch. It seems like God is saying, right? When you pray in the Spirit and you come back out, you will come to the porch. And that's when miracles happen. The door is open, the, the porch, remember the doors of the porch were the first open, right? By King Hezekiah. Yet none of the rest that joined them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all Let's all say it together. And they were all healed. How many? And they were all healed. I believe as we pray in the Spirit, we'll come to the place where all will be healed. Not only that, signs and wonders will happen in Solomon's porch. Not only that, amen, respect will come back to the ministry. And multitudes of souls will be saved. I close with this little uh, story, true story. All right, I mentioned to you just now about the Experiment, I'll close with this experiment. Another experiment. This was done in ORU, R. Roberts University in Tulsa, Oklahoma, many years ago. Dr. Carl Peterson. By the way, the earliest study, if you're looking it up later on, just put speaking in tongues, medical study, okay? You see 3.5 million hits on this story. You see the pictures of the, the doctor and all that, and some of the experiments they use. But this one is another experiment, and I'll close with this. Dr. Carl Peterson of ORU is a brain specialist in R. Roberts University. And he studied people with, uh, who are praying in tongues, but this time it's not the blood flow. He studied the effects of what is released in the brain. In other words, the chemical secretions, like epinephrine and all that, right? But you know what he found when people are praying in tongues? Dr. Carl Peterson found that two chemical secretions were released in the brain. 
And these two chemical secretions, listen, come from a part of the brain that has no other apparent use. I told you, people are still discovering about the brain, right? Guess what? These two chemical secretions give the immune system a boost. And I memorized this statistic because for years I memorized it, 35 to 40 percent. A boost for your immune system of 35 to 40 percent. Who can give you a boost for your immune system of 35 to 40 percent? They say that even if you have tumor in your body or cancer or whatever, there are someone who has the same disease as you and they are alive today after 20 years, after 10 years and all that. Why? Immune system. Stronger. Right? Other people had SARS, they didn't die. Immune system. Amen? I believe that God did not give you a gift that is useless. As some of these denominational preachers would say, God didn't give you a gift that is that you can have it, you don't have to have it. If it came on the day of Pentecost, and it's a gift that proclaimed the wonderful works of God. Trust me, you will see the wonderful works of God. Amen. Give Him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now stand to your feet. I'm about to dismiss you, but before I do so, I want to make sure that all of you get into the floor praying the Spirit. It won't take long. Okay? Number one, make sure you're saved. Those of you who are here, you have never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, I want to pray for you right now. And then, I'm going to release you into this heavenly language, okay? So, put your trust in Jesus. Christ bore our sins and believe on Him and you shall be saved in your house. Say this after me, if that is you. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank You for the gift of Your Son who was crucified for my sins, who was raised from the dead for my justification. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Christ came to save sinners. I am a sinner. And today, I am saved. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a new creation. I'm a child of God. Greatly blessed. Deeply loved. In Jesus' name. Now, listen. I'm going to pray for you. And Jesus said this. If you ask, a child asks the father for bread, will he give him a stone? He asks for a fish, will the father give him a snake? How much more your father in heaven will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Are you ready? All right, we're all going to ask him, okay? Even those who have prayed before, you're going to pray in a fresher and a more released way than ever before, amen? It's about time to get the debris out, amen, in Jesus' name. Time to open the doors, y'all. Time to get to Solomon's porch. Come on, come on, are you ready? All right, lift your hands all across this place. Amen. Those of you in the third service, fourth service, everyone that's watching this, this is timeless, okay? Like God's anointing on everything is timeless. Wherever you're watching this right now, do the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Say, Heavenly Father, I am confident that you will give me right now the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Inundate me. Fill me. Baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Jesus has been glorified. Therefore, the Holy Spirit has been given. And I received right now your Holy Spirit to overflowing in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, count to three right now and then release yourself in the heavenly language. One, two, three. Go ahead. That's right. Go ahead. Now increase your volume. Now, speak undertones. You can do this at work. You can do this at home when people are around. The Bible says, speak to himself and to God. Quietly. Amen? You are in control. Listen, you are in control. The spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. When an evil spirit takes over, you have no choice. He makes you shout. He makes you scream. All right? And then the Holy, the Holy Spirit stops when you stop. Amen? In other words, He will not force you. He's a gentleman. You, you cannot wait for the Holy Spirit to open your mouth. He will not do that. You must open. You speak. He gives you the language. That's how God works. Evil spirits will force you and won't let you stop. 
It's not God's way. That's why this is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now we're gonna sing in tongues. No music for a while, please. We're gonna sing in tongues, okay? Now this is wonderful. It's with your stress. Learn to sing in tongues, all right? Maybe you might start singing in the toilet first, but whatever it is, in the bathroom, whatever, start singing the Spirit. Amen? Something like this. Sere lama sampra riyara mantara basara mantai Here la la lama sere le la mantara balaba Hore la mantara mantere re 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 la sala mantara bakaya Hore la ba sere la mantere la ba sampra mantikaya Hore la ma sampra ndala ba ndara ma shantala mahaya Hore la ma sere re 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 la nantai Hore sere la mantere la mantara matai Okay, you can stop. You see, you can stop, right? You can start, you can stop anytime you want to. It's yours. It's yours. It must be a river that never stops. Okay? Doesn't matter if you're stammering for a while. Keep on stammering. As you're faithful with one, two syllabus, God gives you more. Amen? And God gives you more and more. Amen? You see, you can sing without the, the, the music. Because when Monday comes, they won't be there. <laughs> okay? It'll be you. You can sing in the Spirit. You can sing. Amen? Your wife scolds you. <laughs> your wife tells you your mother-in-law is coming. <laughs> God bless you. Lift your hands all across this place. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you this coming week, you and your loved ones. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance on you and grant to you and yours His wonderful shalom, wholeness and peace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Don't ever let it stop. Don't ever let it stop. Amen. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. But don't go just yet. If you'd like to receive prayer, share your testimony, or find out more about Gospel Partner, just click the link on this screen. If not, I'll see you in the next episode.